Shinedown in the lobby. Welcome Brent and Zach from Shinedown. What's happening? Yeah. First of all, what a response. <laughs> My gosh. All I'm picturing right now is these people in here talking about news and hearing everybody cheering like that. <laughs> Brent, let's start with the fact that you look fantastic. Oh, you're very you do kind. You look fantastic. I saw the video for I'll Follow You, and I was like, brother, just kind of, he looks like the dude from Mad Men with tattoos. <laughs> the dude from Mad Men. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. He actually is the dude from Mad Men. Is that right? No. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I needed a change, and uh, um, I, uh, I lost 70 pounds last year. I let myself get kind of unhealthy. Thanks. Uh, but uh, I, uh, you know, nobody wants to see the front man with his, you know, gut hanging over his belt. You know what I mean? So uh, it was something that was conscious, and uh, I got to give a lot of respect to, to my band, everybody. You know, Zach and Eric and Barry, um, they really, really helped me out a lot because uh, I just gotten, you know, I just let myself go, and it was just one of those things where I needed to get healthy again. They gave me a ton of support, and uh, I have a beautiful five-year-old little boy who I want to be around for, and I want to be healthy and strong for, and uh, yeah, it was just something I wanted to do. And everybody asked about, I never thought my hair would be like such a big deal, a big deal. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it just, I, I feel like you, you store energy in your hair, and uh, I hadn't had short hair since I was like 16, and uh, I just felt like I needed to cut it off, I needed to start fresh. You look great. And well, the thanks. band, I mean, obviously the band sounds great, Zach. You look great too, though. Thank you. Just want you to know. You look or great. tank top on purpose. Yeah. That's right. Show off them guns. That's right. <laughs> 14 inches of gut show. <laughs> 14 inches. <laughs> so let's talk Carnival of Madness real quick because we're doing a pre sale right now on comp.com up until 10 o'clock tonight for your show. Come About time, down. right? To put that on sale. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the band's, uh, you know, it is our baby, but it's also Bill McGathy, our manager from Indigo. He, he came up with the concept four years ago, and uh, we're very honored to be coming back um, to be the, uh, the headliner again. But we got a killer bill this year. There's a brand new band called We As Human that's going to be out with us, and then the lovely Maria Brink in this moment is going to be with us. Skillet um, and the legendary Papa Roach. I, could, I think you can call them... I think you can call them legendary by now. They're just out of control also. I mean, yeah, they've been running for 20 years. Yeah, it was something specific with us when we were putting Carnival together. We, you know, we've, we've done festivals and, and we've been on the road with um, a lot of those bands, but we've never done a tour collectively together. And we, we talked about doing two, three stages and we just didn't really want to do it. There's a lot of other tours that are out there right now that have like a lot of stages and there's a ton of bands. And that's all fine and good, but we wanted to separate a little bit um, our tour from those so it wasn't the same thing. Plus, this is the first year that the Carnival of Madness is actually going to be a real carnival. We're actually going to have eight uh, performers out on the tour with us, and we're going to make it super, super rad for all the kids and the families that come out and, uh, you know, make it more of an event and an experience, you know, than just a show. Very cool. Uh, tell me about the Warner Sound Live Room, which is, yeah, Zach, talk to us about that. Um, cool. Yeah, they've been doing that. I think we were like one of um, maybe the first ten bands to do it. Maybe. As far yeah, they well let's see, Hellstorm did it, and, and excuse me, uh, Ed Sheeran did it. I think that Christina yeah. Perry did it. it was I think nice. we were one of the first bands that went in and did it. It was a yeah. cool opportunity. It was super cool. That's for, that's for, especially for the fans to see us kind of go in. It's super raw. There's you know there's no tracks. There's no you just go in record it as a band and that's the way it is. And most of it, I think the most we did was two takes or some stuff. Yeah, the, the whole point about the Warner Sound too is they want the band that's performing um, to do it in a studio that they have a history with. Um, and then also of the songs that are your own, they want you to do a cover song from some other artist that was in the same studio. So you guys have an interesting one. We did. We did uh, Carol King's "I Feel the Earth Move." Um, and. Uh, we did it at Henson Studios in Los Angeles, California. Um, I believe it was Los Angeles. It might be Hollywood proper. I think it's Hollywood proper. Um, but uh, we did uh, Barry Kirch. Our drummer did all the drum tracks for Leave a Whisper in Henson Studios. Um, and uh, it was something where being in that particular, we have a lot of history with that studio because we've still done a lot of work over the years there. Um, but. You know, it was a cool experience because it kind of made us really be on our toes. Because, like Zach was saying, we only cut each song we did that day like 
the most we did was two takes. I think we did actually two, I think we did three takes about Feel the Earth Move because we had never performed yeah, it together. We just talked about it. <laughs> we'd been off the road for two months, so we hadn't seen each other. So we did no practice before we got there. Um, it makes you, you know, you have to practice what you preach. If you're a good band, prove it. And I think that's what we did on the Warner Sound. So the fans can check it out, though. I mean, yeah. Find out it's on iTunes yeah. and YouTube. And all yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool And thing. the cool thing is, is it's not just audio. It's uh, it's a visual, video, too. Yeah. They videoed the, yeah. whole, um, the, the whole day. Uh, we were only in there for about six hours, but they documented it all on film. So it was right. A legal whisper, 10 years anniversary, like yeah. not just a few weeks ago. At Memorial Day. Yeah, I mean, and I remember when that album came out because uh, Fly From the Inside was just like my favorite tune in that whole Thank you. Um, what is the biggest lesson you've learned over the 10 years? I mean, you guys have been, I mean, nonstop, hit after hit after hit. What's the biggest lesson? Uh, biggest lesson is stay humble and remember that there's only one boss and it's everybody in the audience. Woo! So, um, uh, and seriously. Yeah! We, we've honestly, um, we've been very, very specific. We've never, ever made the same record twice. Um, you know, Amaryllis doesn't sound like the sound of madness. Madness doesn't sound like us and them. Us and them doesn't sound like we whisper. I think that you have to hold your integrity very, very close to your heart, your body, and your soul. Um, because people aren't stupid. They can see right through you if you're not being completely honest with them. We've always said that we write songs because it's cheaper than therapy. You know, we don't, we don't really know how to hold anything in. And I think people that have connected with us over the years and you know if they're just now finding out about us they know that the one thing about the band is that we're going to be honest with you and we're going to talk about the situations and the subjects and the people and the places that we've you know we've we've been to we've met and it's all about experience you know you're only going to be here on this earth once um so make it count you know um the world's a really really beautiful place it could be chaotic but uh i think over the years because we tour so relentlessly it's you know to any band that's starting out or any artist that's starting out, make sure that you talk to your audience. Make sure you talk to the people that come and support you because without them, you don't have a career. We are, we're live with Shine Down in the comp lobby right now and we're gonna get to your music here in just a second. A couple more real quick questions though that I wanted to ask you. Um, first of all, rock and roll for you is more than just music. I understand it's very personal. Yeah. Um, is that the same, is that true for you too, Zach? Yeah, I think for me, we, we, broke, we both grew up in Tennessee, so we're surrounded by music. And I was just kind of encompassed in, in blues, which, you know, then, then became rock and roll. So, yeah, just being around the whole Elvis here and all that stuff, just for me, it's, it's, it's all I've known. We always say we don't know how to do anything else. Or not. We don't, we've never had any other job. Yeah, because we've been asked before, <laughs> like, if you weren't, you know, in a band and you weren't doing music for a living, what would you do? And I, honestly, I don't know. Him and I are screwed. Totally. <laughs> We know nothing else, and this is all we've done. But rock and roll is, I, I've said this before, the band, um, we encompass this statement, and, and the statement is that there's a lot of different genres of music all over the world, a lot of different styles and what have you, and we listen to a lot of that because we're inspired by a lot of different people. But the thing is, is that it's never going to stray too far away from drums, bass, guitar, badass vocals, and a killer song. That's the beauty of rock and roll. Rock and roll is not really a genre of music. Rock and roll is a way of life. For a lot of people. Yeah. Greatest gift that life has given you. My Greatest son. Gift. Your son. My son. Yeah. Saved my life. What kind of father are you? What kind of father am I? Are you the disciplinary guy? Or are you I'm the very attentive. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very you attentive. Be disciplinary. I'm a bit disciplinary. He's uh, very well behaved though. Yeah. My here's the son. Like. Or, sorry, my son, but here's the thing. My son, the last thing in the world I want him to do is to grow up and be a jerk. You know what I mean? I want him to be respectful. I want him to open the door for the ladies. I want him to say, yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. You know? Because I think that it's important. And, you know, he, uh, and what I said a minute ago, you know, he, he really did save me, you know, he saved my life. You know, because I think I was going down some funky roads in the past until he was born. Um, I didn't really see everything come full circle. I mean, really, my son saved me from my vanity. Zach? Uh, yeah. I would say this band. The I mean, band? It's been, next year will be nine years. So. I, and he feels you're extremely important to the band. I mean, I've read him yeah. saying that you are, you and, uh, not Barry, because Barry's with you, but uh, Eric. <laughs> that yeah. Eric and Zach are, 
Like maybe Shinedown may not be who they are today without? It wouldn't be may not be. Shinedown wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Zach Myers and Eric Bass. That's like right. honestly, because I know that there's some people that have been with us in this room even from very, you know, from the very, very beginning. Um, and, and there's no reason to, to go forward with the, the comments about, you know, who was there in the beginning and who's there now. The reality is, is that if it didn't change, um, it wouldn't, man wouldn't exist. It just wouldn't happen. Um, so what Eric and Zach did is they, they came into a situation with 100%. They didn't have an agenda. They just loved the band. And that was what needed to happen. We, me and Barry needed two individuals that loved us and, um, and wanted to see the band grow.